Okay? Please be here. Because today I want to preach about our worship life. Ah, very important. It is important. Now, when I was studying Acts 13, I saw it. And the Lord placed it in my heart that I should teach the church that I pastor how not to miss it this end time. In fact, I prayerfully prayed, you know, that all our choir members will be around. And I thank God for more. God bless you. The Lord is your strength. Receive fresh energy in the name of Jesus. Continue to do this work and be strong in Jesus' name. You will not break down again. Every member of the choir, the Lord will strengthen you. We had a, it was a loaded week. The Lord will strengthen The Lord will reward you Amen. with good things of life in Jesus' name. Amen. And we here too, the Lord will strengthen us. It's not easy to, to do the work of God. Acts chapter 13. Let's be on our feet. We are going to read verse 1 and 2 together. Just two verses. And I want us to read the two verses together. Acts chapter 13. Is she apostoli? Uri kankala. Ese kene ati keji. She kankala abi. Iketala. Yoruba wizi yo. Yoruba wizi yo. Teba liye ni to mo yoruba ka. You know when my children, all of them, they, they, I don't know how they pass Yoruba language in school. Anytime they come with Yoruba assignment, I always tell them, this is how me I pass Yoruba in, when I was in school. I will teach my classmates English. They will teach me. So during the exam, when they ask me, they will call me. Pss, 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 pss. What's the answer You're in English? My come to buy the buy Yoruba. If man be with me, left for one, he buy me call. Because I don't know, I don't know Yoruba at all. So I didn't fail Yoruba all through. So when the children too brought their, their, their Yoruba to me, I don't know Yoruba. Ask your mommy, their mommy too cannot Yoruba. They said, how did you pass? I told them how they passed. And all of them too pass Yoruba. I don't know how. I don't know how. Yoruba is difficult. But it's our language. If I saw online a white, an American lady that studied Yoruba language and is coming back to Nigeria to teach Yoruba language. <laughs> Sir? It's a, it's a slap on our face. Ha! Ah, it's a slap on our face. I think they have put it in the curriculum now. Every Friday, they said all schools, every Friday, no English. All primary schools, all secondary schools, it's in the curriculum now, compulsory. It's a slap on our face. Wow. It's a slap on our face. <laughs> That's a big one. I'll tell you something today. Acts chapter 13. Are we there? Are we ready? Media. If you are ready, thank you. Let's read together after the count of three. One, two, and three. Let's go. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Man Manin which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. These were the people present in that service that day. Verse 2. Verse 2. Let's go again. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. You know what? No, give me back that verse 2. Thank you. You know what touched me when I was studying? Because I think a lot when I study, as they ministered to God. Which means we, we can minister to God. You know, I'm ministering to you now. The Bible says, as they ministered to God. Now, you soon sit down. I now went to the Message Bible. Can we go to the Message Bible? Let's read it together. Verse 2. The Message Bible, verse 2. Message Bible, thank you. Let's read together again. One, two, three, and let's go. One day, as they were worshiping God... They were also fasting as they waited for guidance. The Holy Spirit spoke. Take Barnabas and Saul and commission them for the work I have called them to do. 
I don't know whether you noticed something. Please sit down. Sit down because of your legs. God bless you. The Lord will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Please, before I forget, keep this scripture. Hold it for me like this. Before I forget, anytime we are giving offering, I just remembered now. Anytime we are giving offering, we are coming out and you see an elderly person in front. You know what? Please don't overtake them. Did you get that? Courtesy demands. If you see them in front of you, it angers them. It makes them to remember that I was once like you. You are also coming to be like me. You will see. If you see them in front of you, just follow them. Even when they are slow, be, be, decide to be slow. Follow them patiently. So, let's go back to the word. When we read Acts of the Apostles in the King James Version, hold on with this. The Bible says, and they minister to God. Now, and if you look at the message Bible, it helps us to understand what it means to minister to God. The Bible says, and they were worshipping God. Now, what does that mean? It shows us that praise and worship that we sing in church is supposed to be for one purpose. Now, what's the purpose? It's supposed to be ministering to God. Hello? Now, you know, some churches now are coming up to say, praise and worship is not supposed to be part of the, there's nowhere in the Bible where it is saying that we should do praise and worship in church. In fact, I watched, I listened to one on radio. He said, all this praise and worship that they are doing in church, it's not biblical. Listen here, we saw Acts of the Apostles is the, is the book that was written after Pentecost. It captured the, the Pentecost. And you see that they were worshiping God. The Bible says, and they were ministering. Listen, all children of God should understand that that's our first lesson I'm going to really expand on. Anytime you are involving in singing and you know that you want to praise God, you want to worship God, the focus must remain one. And what should be the focus? The focus must remain on you ministering to God. You know why I'm teaching you this? I will tell you as I go on. Because a lot of things are creeping into the church of Jesus. A lot of things are creeping into the... You know what it means to worship? Worshiping God, you are adoring him. You are giving God what he likes. So, praise and worship time is a season to minister. Lord, I am giving you this worship. Praise and worship time is not a time for entertainment. Now, today we see so many worship online. You see some Christians... Do you know that gradually now they are bringing into praise worship the things that are circulating on social media? You see during praise worship and somebody will say, go, 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 go. I don't know whether you have noticed that. Yeah. I've seen it online. And when I was studying last, uh, this, this, what I'm teaching you now, is my morning devotion on Wednesday. When I was studying on Wednesday morning, I was studying Acts 13. And God said, look at this. Praise worship is to minister to God. How does go, 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 go minister to God? Now, and if you listen to the lyrics of the owner of the song, he says, which means, my friend, be going. I am following you behind. That's not a praise song. How did we bring it into praise? Because if we don't address these things, church, it will get to a point, praise and worship will not reach God again. And I will tell you what will suffer. If your praise, your worship does not reach God. We see so many things today. Now, praise the Lord. You want to sing? Oh, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Yes, it's a good song. But that social media thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I, can you see that you all know it? I know that the person that led that praise online wanted to trend. You must get it right. Praise and worship is not about trending. It's not all about being popular. No. 
Look at it. The Bible says they, they were ministering to God. And Amplified, sorry, good uh, sorry, message Bible helps us to explain that that ministering to God was that they were worshiping God. Can you imagine? We say we are in the segment of praise worship and song is on, everybody's worshiping God and all of a sudden, you just came in with a song. My head carry me, they go. And a better day can. It's not worship. Does he worship God in any way? It does not. It may look entertaining. I will tell you where that one is needed. It may cite the people, but that is not praise. They were ministering to God. Can I tell you the truth? One of the reasons why power is not as it is before. In today's church, like it was where in those days church, is because, see, our praise worship is mostly focused on trying to impress the people. The Bible says, and they were ministering to God. This shows us that during worship time, sorry, our singers should lead us to minister to God. Our singers should not lead us to either ourselves or to any other being. The focus should be towards God. The songs, the beats, the dance should be for one purpose. And what should be that purpose? Glorify God. The dance should not just be to make us sweat. Ah, the praise worship today was ah, no. The beats should not just to entertain us. That's why our instrumentalist comes in. That let's just look for something to psych the people. No. The songs should not just be what will make us happy. You know, there are some songs, once you bring it out because it is trending, everybody is happy. It should be her. Her. Towards God. Now, and that shows us that whoever is going to lead worship Whoever is going to lead us to praise God must be somebody of God's presence. Say here, say here, say here. Let me talk to our choir. You know, we have a system in our church, but gradually it's fading. What's the system? The system before is that whoever is going to lead praise must come with the list of the songs. But I know that the problem is that so many of you are already big. And when your choir mistress tries to look at your song, you say, why should you know me? Listen, we have one problem in Nigeria. We have people that are bigger than the system. And that's the problem of Nigeria. People are bigger than the system. Sir, the first time I traveled out of the country, everybody was on the queue. No matter who you are. The man I sat down with, a white man on the plane, was telling me, I came, I was invited to Nigeria. Do you know I was Suka? I said, I've heard her name. He said, she invited me. She has a school in Abuja. That school is expensive. They invited me to come and become the principal. I said, wow. He was speaking from his nose. I was hearing with my ears. I was trying to pay attention to. Joshua told me the school fees, told me how much they were to pay him. Do you know that as we all got down, nobody jumped the queue? Because there was a system. If you go against the system, no matter who you are, they will fight you. But you know the problem we have in Nigeria? The problem of Nigeria is Nigerians. When there is a system, we want to bypass it. And we have brought it into church. And you know, when the choir mistress says that it is almighty so, so, and so, that wants to lead praise, and if she's pressed for that, the person will say, if you, are, if you cannot, you better let me step aside. So you have no choice. But it should not be. I will tell you what happens when your praise reach God. So let's understand that praise worship is, should be focused on one thing. Ministering to God. I wrote here, not to show a new slang. 
Not to show a new dance. Not even to show new beats. Listen, when they said they were worshipping God, worship could either be slow or fast. It is here that we say, worship is either, good morning, Jesus. Then praises is, no, 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 no. Worship is worship. It could either be fast or slow bit. But the focus must remain one. And what's the focus? Let us minister to God. Now, let me now show you the mistakes that creeped into churches. I want to tell you something before we go deeper. You know what happens to most priest leaders is that we don't understand the difference between a concert, a show, and praise worship in church. You know, someone like me, I'm born again. I can't dance to David's song. No matter what the whiskey sings, I can't dance to his song. So what did God do for us to make sure that we don't go back to the world? Before I got born again, I couldn't sleep without blues music. I'll put on a C90 cassette full of blues music. I went to copy it from, from, uh, from uh, a studio. So, do you know that there's Christian blues? That's where we have somebody like uh, that man that blows trumpet. What's his name? Uh, Nathaniel Bassi. We have Dunsi Oyekon. That's what we call Christian entertainment. Those songs in Christian entertainment at times may not just be towards ministering to God. It could be to excite you. Hello? Do you, I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. It could be to excite you. Now, somebody like Inka Efele came up and said, I'm not a gospel artist, I'm a merrymaker. But when we talk about pre-watch time in church, it is not entertainment time. When we talk about praise worship time in church, it is not to excite you in any way. When we talk about praise worship time in, in church, it is to what? Minister to God. Let's get it right, church. Because some of you too, you are the ones making them to want to sing what you want. Because when they are possessed with passion, oh, today we are coming to minister to God and they are singing towards ministering to God and you are tempting them by just looking and not partaking. Okay. Uh, I didn't mean that. 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 I she be little logo, la wale, dag bag bag bag, a wa o nebu me na bag bag, me little logo. You just say everybody shout, yeah! Then you go, give them the second one. My head, carry me, they go. Hold your neighbor. My head, carry me, they go. And then we are better day. You know what we've done? We have put God aside. To excite ourselves. All these things can be done in concerts. But when we come to church, the praise worship should clear, should prepare an atmosphere for the pastor to come preach. The same thing at home. You want to pray in your morning devotion. You want to have time with God. You must learn how to minister to God. Now, and what do I mean ministering to God? Like I said, worshiping God. What do I mean worshiping God? Let me use words that will make you understand. Glorify God. You wake up in the morning, for instance, and you want to say, ah, Lord, for all you have done, O oh God, I will sing hallelujah. You are ministering to God. For the wonders you have done for me, I will shout hallelujah. Lord, for the wonders you have done, I will sing hallelujah. I will sing hallelujah. Unto you are ministering to God. Now, let's rush because of this time. Because of time. Second question I want to ask. Second question I want to ask. What will you know? Sorry. 
Sorry? How will you know when your worship reaches God? How will you know when your worship reach God? In that verse 2, the Bible says, and the Spirit of God spoke. Listen, you will notice the presence of the Holy Spirit. When your worship reaches God, the, how will you know? You will notice by the presence of the Holy Ghost. One more. I will show you examples from scriptures. And you know the reason why we don't see such things like now, like that, it's not common today. It's just because we are copying from the world and bringing into church to entertain the audience. I won't agree. You will notice the presence of the Holy Spirit. There are several ways the Holy Spirit manifests his presence. I will show some. Don't open because of time. In Acts 2, they spoke in tongues. In Acts chapter 2, when the presence of God came down, what happened? The place was filled with the and they started speaking in tongues. You know, the Holy Spirit can show his presence by his gifts. Then in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, when the Holy Ghost came down in the prison where Paul and Barnabas were praying, what happened? Chains were broken. So the Holy Ghost can show his presence by miracles. I remember the day I was healed of stomach ulcer. It was Dickness Kemi Adebanjo that was leading praise on this altar. I'm telling you something about seven or eight years ago. As she was leading, she was leading. She just said, I still remember the song. My God is a good God. Yes, he is. My God is a great God. Yes, he is. I feel like joy. That day, this, the ulcer was holding me. I sat somewhere here. And she said, I feel like jump. As I jumped, it's like I had poop in my stomach. That was the day the pain ceased. The Holy Ghost can manifest his presence. What's number two? I'm sharing with you. By, by miracles. Chains broke. Doors open. In the days of Elisha, the spirit of God manifests itself by prophecy. The Bible says, Elisha said, get me an instrument, instrumentalist. As the instrumentalist was playing, the voice of the Lord came. You may not see wind. You may not see the rain. But there are to be full of water. The Holy Ghost can manifest his presence by prophecy. That's why you see that at times when watches, worship reaches God, you just hear a toss hear the Lord in the service. And you'll be shocked. I've experienced one or two like that. One that I will never forget. My wife was in that fellowship that time. Under the pastor that raised us. Could awa uti niki board. Church me the lonely drum set. Kosi ate wani. And what was our song that time? Praise the Lord. Oh, single, single. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Oh, single, single. Praise the Praise the Lord. This is how to say, oh, 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 oh. Lord. Praise his holy name. Oh, single, single. Me, Nikkei, love me. As we were worshiping, one sister, my wife will remember, just started speaking in tongues. As she was speaking in tongues, she just screamed the name of one sister in church. Called her name, her first name. Called her son name. And, and said, you committed abortion last week. I forgive you. Eh? Nobody will ever believe. Sister, I don't worship alone. He said, but I, the Lord, am merciful. I forgive you, but if you do it again, you will not record, you will not come out of it. Do you know that? Few months after, that sister died in the doctor's hospital committing abortion. I'm telling you two life story. If I remember her name, I'll tell you. She lived in Okibola. The Holy Ghost can manifest his presence in several ways. 
in the days of Jehoshaphat, how did he manifest? As he were praising God, he was attacking their enemies. But I want to be One, one pastor came here. He said he wants to come and train our people in Gogo. And he was in my office. He was now telling me. He said, Pastor Timalu, Muni Lutelu, Moti Gori. If you mock it to our can do a meal, I meant to loo. I want to joke, but I want to monton solar and you are no mama. He jokes in one my yato city. Do you understand what I'm saying? When God is truly praised, eh, the Holy Ghost will man kill her, then watch your chifu. If the Holy Spirit is not there, there's no need now. Imagine you come to church, you come and spend two hours, you go back, no encounter with the Holy Ghost. I mean, I won't go to church. I, I treasure my time as you see me. That's why I ask my wife, ask our ministers. Anytime I go for a program, the most important aspect to me is the time of the word. I concentrate. I don't allow anybody to talk to me. Because I always like to leave every meeting with something. Say here. The presence of the Holy Spirit is what will show when God is well ministered to in the place of worship. When God is well ministered to, it is the presence of the Holy Ghost that will show it. That's why praise leaders prepare well for praise worship, the same way pastors prepare to preach. Don't just depend on your gifts. Sincerely, to the glory of God, though, because of level of experience I have had in ministry, I can go to a meeting without preparing a message and preach for three hours. But I won't do it. This message I'm sharing with you, it was since Wednesday that I've studied it, preparing it, taking time to listen to God to hear what he will say. It was yesterday morning I wrote it down. When I was clear where God was going. Except you are into Christian entertainment. You know, you are call Abi, If I invite you for bed and you come and minister to God, I will drive you away. But in church, when we are in church, let us maintain the focus. Number three. Wow, I have five minutes. Third lesson. The third lesson from that verse, verse one is in verse one. See the people involved in that worship. Let's go back to verse 1. Acts 13, 1. Let's see the people involved in that worship. Acts 13, 1. Acts 13, 1. If you are there before the... Uh, okay, thank you. The congregation in Antioch was blessed with a number of prophets, prophet preachers, and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, nicknamed Niger, Lucius, the Syrian, Manin, an advisor of the ruler of Herod, Saul, and Saul. Now look at the people. These were the people worshiping God, and God's presence came down. 
I wrote something down here that is very important. They all were children of God. Do you know that for your worship to be acceptable before the Lord, you must be a child of God first? You know, a lot of unbelievers will say, in your Lord, God loves worship. He loves worship. No matter what I do, if I just worship God. My wife knows that I love fried rice. The rate I, at which I love fried rice is so much. It's my favorite food. No matter the kind of gift they prepare on my birthday, what do I have to tell you? Just go and prepare fried rice for me. If I eat fried rice, it's the spinning. All this, uh, they buy card. Uh, they write message. I do but when you move me. They buy frame. And he shouts, it's a fried rice for me. But no matter how much I love fried rice, imagine you putting fried rice in a potty. The Bible says the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to God. Where is it written? Proverbs. Go there. Let's look at it. Proverbs 21, 27. Because some will say, ah, God, life, if I, I will just praise my way to God and he will not consider anything. Not lie. You have to be his child before he can accept your praise. Let's read it together. Okay, we'll read message and we'll now go back to King James. It says, religious performance by the wicked does what? Stinks. It's even worse when they use it to get ahead. Now, King James. Let's go. The sacrifice of the wicked is what? Abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? You cannot just be committing immorality and be saying, I will give God praise. I'm going to be 30 years. I will give God praise. 30 hours praise. No, 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 no. You have to be his child first. Are you his child? That's why the praise that moved God came from God's children. means okay. That is so I'm summarizing. Praise of all repentant sinners doesn't reach God. Praise of unrepentant sinners doesn't reach God. Take note of that. I'm summarizing. That's why. If you want your praise to reach God, why not come to Jesus? You know, when you accept Christ genuinely as a born-again Christian, you have the righteousness of Christ. Uh -huh. when, you now, when you now minister to God in true worship, if you see me in my time with God, there's no keyboard there. It's me and my God and my voice. I compose songs for him. And most times he will just speak to me, son. Accurate prophecies. Will you serve God? I'm talking to you. That's why. If you are not yet born again, I encourage you so that you not just be wasting your praise. It will reach God. And all our worship leaders, don't forget today's message. Don't just go online. When they invite me for ministration or when it's opportunity for me to sing, let me just do something that everybody will scream. If you carry everybody along and God is not there, it's, it's a waste. The Bible says vain is the help of man. It's my prayer that the Lord God Almighty will give you deeper encounters. But this is where I want to rest my case. If you are blessed, put your hands together for the Lord.